Escargoon took a step closer to DDD, getting ready to speak his mind. It was actually hard even taking a step closer. DDD had an energy to him at that moment that made it hard to approach him. Sire, why did you disappear like that? I, I want to know why. Escargoon stuttered, attempting to sound like he was up and he didn't know anything. Dedede sighed lightly, looking away from him, back still turned. You're afraid of me, ain't you? He grunted, his voice sounding very broken. Escargoon wasn't expecting that. I mean, Dedede was quite the scary person if he wanted to be, but he didn't fear him as much as he used to. A small part of him feared when he would get mad at someone, but that was it. No, sire, I'm not scared of you. Escargoon stood confidently as he said that. If I walked up to you right now... You would back up. You're still afraid of me, Goonie, don't lie. Dedede grunted out again, still refusing to look at him. Escargoon began to tense up in anger. Sire, I'm not afraid of you! You do not scare me! The snail snarled, trying to get his point across. Dedede, in response, swiftly turned to him in a fast motion, his face being blank, very emotionless. Escargoon jumped back, a small squeak escaping him. He had done what Dedede expected him to do. See, I was right. You are afraid. The king verified, still looking emotionless, before he began to feel his facade break. I'm a monster, ain't I? The king went out as tears in his eyes began to show themselves. Escargoon was surprised. He very quickly responded. No, sire, that's not true. He yelled out to him, hoping he would just listen. Yes, I am. I still scare you. I'm scared you for life, Escargoon. Dedede's voice shaking as he spoke. The king turned away once more. I... I don't deserve you, Goonie. You can do way better than me. I don't even know why you look forward to seeing me again. Dedede sobbed softly. Escargoon tried to stay calm, but was having some trouble with doing so. He walked closer to Dedede. You didn't scar me. That, that was years ago. I'm not worried about that anymore. Escargoon replied. King Dedede shook his head in response. How do you even have the heart to forgive me? I deserve to never see you again. That's the only punishment that's fit for all the things I did to you. Escargoon was floored by all this. He knew his behavior back then was horrible. He was still beating himself up about it. Sire, please just stop hurting yourself over this. It's been four years. Things have changed between us. Escargoon yelped out, grabbing onto the king's sleeve cuff. King Dedede looked down at the mollusk. He felt his whole body tighten up, thinking of what he had done to him back then. How much pain he must have been in because of him. It practically haunted him. It's not okay. I never cleared it all up. I never fixed nothing. I never told you. Dedede whimpered softly. Escargoon grabbed even tighter onto the sleeve cuff of the king's robes. Then just tell me! Stop bottling it all up! I don't want to be left in the dark about all the things that hurt you, sire! Just tell me what's hurting you so I can help you through it! Escargoon called out, just hoping Dedede would open up to him. Dedede looked away once more before turning to the mollusk, swiftly holding both his hands in his own. I'm sorry, Escargoon! I'm sorry for everything! Everything! Dedede wailed out, shutting his eyes as he did so, allowing the tears to just flow out of him at that point. I was so stupid! I only realized how much I'd done to you when you left! I thought about it and thought about it! I just wanted to call to tell you, but... I thought you moved on. I know if you did, you wouldn't want me there. Escargoon held Dedede's hand softly in return. Sire, I... I... Before Escargoon could say a word, Dedede continued on. It's okay if you don't ever want to talk to me again after this. I understand why you wouldn't. But I wanted you to know how sorry I am and how much I regret doing it all. I changed so much so I could become better. For me, for Kirby, and for you too. But just... I figured I'd let you know all that. S sire p please just let me speak for a moment. Escargoon stumbled a bit. All of this was a lot. Like a lot on him. Dedede gently held him steady with one hand as the snail began to speak. I forgive you, your majesty. I, I talked to Bendanity about you. He, he told me everything. About how much you missed me. My voice. My help. My, my everything. Escargoon empathized, holding the king's hands gently. Dedede was astonished. He had told him everything? He knew it all? Dedede stared down at the snail, looking anxious, knowing they still had so much to discuss. You told me how much you couldn't live without me. How much you just wanted me home. Escargoon lamented, his voice suddenly beginning to sound very similar to Dedede's. 
very choked up. Suddenly, Dedede felt the snail's familiar touch wrapped around in a hug. Sire, I missed you too. I can't live without you either. It was so painful not being with you. I thought about you every day. Escargoon wailed out into DDD. DDD continued to let himself open up to Escargoon and cry along with him. I'm just so happy you didn't forget about me, Goody. DDD sobbed, wrapping his arms around Escargoon tightly. Escargoon softly smiled as he cried. I can never forget you. You remember the vow we made? We vowed to never be apart. And even though we were apart for a short time, we came back together just like we had promised. Escargoon confirmed, smiling, remembering the day they made that vow. Dedede chuckled as he wept. <laughs> you remembered. I thought you forgot about that whole thing. Dedede smiled warmly. Escargoon continued to hug Dedede, not wanting to let go. I can never forget about that day. It was one of the best days of my life. Escargoon spoke softly, resting his head onto the penguin. King Dedede smiled, still crying, but not as much anymore. Goony, can I show you something? Dedede asked softly, looking down at the snail. Sh sure, Kingy. Escargoon looked up to the king before hesitantly letting him go. Dedede began to lean gently onto the balcony and pointed to a spot with one hand and held Escargoon's hand in the other. Escargoon felt his cheeks get hot as Dedede grabbed onto his hand, but he looked to where he had pointed. Before, because of all the emotions, he couldn't see what a beautiful night it was. The stars were all visible in the sky, and the moon lit up the kingdom perfectly. It was quite nice, though, and Escargoon didn't understand what Dedede had been pointing at, though. Dedede began to explain, looking out to where he pointed. Every night I would come out here and watch that spot right there since you had left. Because I remember watching leave from that very spot. I always watched it, hoping one time when I stared at it, I would see you coming back. Dedede spoke softly as he rested one hand on the balcony. <laughs> Ain't it ironic? The one time I wasn't looking, <laughs> you came home. Dedede chuckled in a melancholic way. Escargoon stared out at the spot. Now, his eyes not being able to look away. Your Majesty, I, I had no idea you were so thoughtful about these little things. His garden spoke softly as he looked out, gripping onto the king's hand. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things you don't know about me yet. But we got all the time in the world for that now. Dedede -de -de looked down to his companion to see that familiar smile stare back at him. His gargoon sighed softly. <sighs> I suppose this takes care of all those bottled up feelings you've been having recently, your majesty. Hesgargoon asked, smiling sweetly as he looked up to his king. King Diddy looked down for a moment. Well, that's some of it. Not all of it yet, but... Diddy pondered, speaking quietly. Hesgargoon continued to look at Diddy, now wondering what his brain was up to. What? What is it, sire? The snail asked, wondering what else the king wanted to confess. Well, Hesgargoon, this... Something I gotta get off my chest. 